So now let's devise the algorithms that will allow us to solve the problem and find the most efficient one of the algorithms. So we were talking about a singly linked list and we said it was slightly challenging to solve the problem because we are being asked to find an element based on its position relative to the final element. But we don't know the number of elements in the list unless we traverse the list. And once we traverse the entire list to find the number of elements in the list, then there is no easy way to backtrack and actually pick m elements uh, uh, away from the final element going backwards because you can't do that since it's a singly linked list if it was a doubly linked list that would be so much more efficient so you'd have to go through another traversal for that purpose or find a better al algorithm that would allow you to do it in one traversal for example so this is a challenge before us now what algorithms do we have that we can solve the problem the first and most obvious one is the one I just mentioned and that is to first figure out the number of elements in the list so perform a full traversal of the, the list. So you'd have your first traversal that is there just to f figure out the number of elements in the list, call it n. And then what you do is you would traverse the list one, a second time. So you'd have two traversals. The second time you would traverse the list until knowing that you have n elements in the list. And you can and and also you know that you want m elements away the element that is m steps away from the final element and you could actually figure out by saying uh, L is equal to N minus M, where L is the index of the element you're actually looking for. N is the number of elements that you figured out during your first traversal. M is the um, the position of the element relative to the final element uh, that you want to look for. And this is this formula basically just gives you the, the index of the element you're looking for. And so this this will solve it. This will solve the problem, but requires two traversal. The first traversal is to figure out the number of elements in the list, which wasn't given to us. And the second traversal, keeping this in mind, you can find you can easily find the the element that you're looking for based on n and m. Now, um, this, despite having two traversals, is still a big O of n. So, uh, in terms of efficiency, as a list grows larger and larger, it's still a big O of n, so it's a linear time efficiency, which is fine. But the only problem is that since we have two traversals, if we're talking about really, really long lists, and these lists, for example, are stored on disk, then every time you're actually performing this uh, traversal, you're going to have to load this list into memory and perform the traversal and then do it again so and sometimes you can't really load the entire list into memory so you'd have to load parts of the list and so so this these these operations involve what we call swaps you'd have to swap from the memory to the disk itself and these operations are very costly and take a lot of time so if we can really limit the number of traversals we we perform that'd be really good and talking about two traversals right here is probably not so efficient so let's put so this solution aside see if we can find something better um, there is the other implementation. This implementation is particularly easy to implement. And the way to do it is to essentially look at every single element in the list and to move um, m steps forward. So let's look at the first element. Move m steps forward. Say m is equal to 2. So this would be 1, 2 right here, right? So let's stop here. Is, and then ask yourself the question, is this the last element in the list? If this is the last element in the list, then you know that this position, this element that you started from, and from which you made those two hops, you know that this element is the mth uh, to last element. If this one turns out the one that you stopped at turns out to be the last element of the list. But in this particular case, it's not. So do this for every single element in the list until you find one that satisfies your condition. So suppose m is 2 in this, in this particular case. Let's start here and go 1, 2. But this is not the final element of the list, so let's do this. Do it for the second one. This is one, two. This is the final element of the list. Therefore, this is the element we're looking for. And you stop right there, and you return a pointer to this element. So it involves you going over every single element in the list and performing these steps, um, going forward by m number of times. And if you reach the final element by doing those hops then you would have known you would know that this element that you started at is the mth to last element now how complex is this operation in terms of time well you're gonna do these m hops for every single element of the list potentially and in the worst case scenario of course if m is equal to zero then you're gonna have to do it for every single one until you reach this very end and you realize this was the one you're looking for and this could take big O of mn and this is a pretty long operation 